If we look at the electromagnetic spectrum, there's a couple of important things here. So if we look from left to right here, we first of all got longer wavelengths leading into short wavelengths. So have a think about back to the back to the video that you should have just watched and think about what that means in terms of energy. So you should you should remember here that the short wavelengths at the right hand side here are higher energy than the longer wavelengths. So we actually only see a really small part of the electromagnetic spectrum here in the visible wavelengths. But it's remote sensing becomes really useful when we start looking at the infrared portion of the spectrum. So it's not visible to us, but satellite sensors have the ability to measure in, into that portion. The other thing that's really key is that not all electromagnetic radiation from the sun actually penetrates through the Earth's atmosphere and touches the, the surface of the Earth. So it's, it's useful to have a look at what wavelengths are actually getting through because these are the only ones that are going to be of use for, for remote sensing and for obtaining imagery. So not all of the infrared part of the spectrum is actually passing through the atmosphere, in which case it's not of use for us in remote sensing. But then how do we get from electromagnetic radiation to an image? So if you have a look at the, the picture on the left hand side here, we've got the sun being the electromagnetic radiation and it's, it's emitting that radiation down to the earth which is then reflected, transmitted or absorbed back and it's the reflected light that goes back up to the sensor. And we use that to create images. So on the right hand side I've got an example of, um, of a colour composite image. These are both Landsat images. Um, and I've used different wavelengths of light to create that image. And there's also a thermal image there. So they're showing different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum that we're creating an image from.